The March 10th uh, Finance Committee meeting of the College School District Board of Directors is called to order. Um, Chris, front row, do you want to do the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you like to call the roll for the record? Director Mendoza. Here. Director O'Brien. Here. Director Russo. Here. Director Simsek. Here. Director Zelensky. Here. Director Apple. Director Frank. He's not able to be here tonight. Director Honchar. We are not sure. He might be coming. <laughs> and Director Shriver. Here. Uh, Superintendent. Sure. I will uh, turn things over to Mr. Cheswick to update us on some budget and finance items. So with, um, I wanted to change the format a little bit of our budget update where I give kind of a comparison from this year to last year's um, to go by object which is salaries, employee benefits, and then by programs. Um, some of the breakout is regular ed, special ed, 
our business office, um, support offices, so that service. And just give an overall look of where we're at this year compared to last year. So um, expenses this year, 1920, through this time, February 29th, we were at 16.18 million. Last year, we were at 16.01 million, which is about 1% higher than last year. Right now, we have budgeted 29.586 million versus last year's budget of 28.414 million uh, for a total difference of 1.17 million. So <clears throat> the budget was 4.12% higher or 1% over expenditures so far this year. So I think we're on a pretty good pace as far as expenditures go. Um, I also did a revenue breakout by percentage so you can see how the money has come in. Um, some, of the, some of the state money can be a little bit slow from year to year times, but looks like it's remained pretty consistent for the most part this year um, is we have 22.325 million in last year at this time we had 21.385 million in for about $939,000 more that's 4.3 percent higher from last year to this point we budgeted 28.8 million dollars 28.87 million dollars um, and then last year we budgeted 28.13 for the uh, revenue we have now split at 2.62 percent higher for the 1920 year. So um, that's where we are with the current budget update. Um, with the budget, as we have retirements in and such, we're around an 860 deficit right now. Um, so that's a quick update on the 2021 budget, and then also some of the aspects we're we're getting to our final recommendation on the bus contract. As everybody knows. STA came to us in January and said they were not going to renew their two-year option, put us in a spot where we had to go out and get bids, um, not bids, but we had to get proposals at that point from folks. We had a choice to go out to RFP with specific contract rates. Um, we felt the process was better to just reach out to several bus companies and get proposals. One bus company said it, they felt it was advantageous that we went just for the proposal route out to make an RFP because they felt we had better better proposal numbers on per day fast routes from doing the proposal versus what they've seen with RFP. So that's a positive. I think we're at that point. And then um, just to get on with it, we have an agreement. Uh, Mr. Derek Wilson's here with the Wilson Group and Benny, who's our direct um, liaison, I would say, with the Wilson Group. And he's worked back and forth with us since I've been here. And Mr. Uh, Riddell was here and the Josh Jones. And we really have worked on cleaning up some of the overages we were having, making it more efficient with the black and white versus color copiers. And when Josh came in, we've been kind of talking back and forth with Vinny at this point and um, wanted to make things more efficient, wanted to try to save some paper and such, and also get better machines that run more efficiently in. So we came up with a process where we were able to keep our payment the same, but extend. we're in a current five-year lease that ends in December, I believe, December of 2021. Um, but with putting these new machines in, one of the machines, and I'll let uh, Mr. Wilson explain that, the production machine that's going to allow our kids up in the shop to print uh, things with cardboard where they can do megaphones, golf boxes for the foundation events, and, you know, instead of paying an outside company, we can reimburse the expenses to the district and it gives the kids something to do with those. So we've added to the shop up there. We'll have better machines for the district. And then uh, one of the things Mr. Wilson really stresses with that is community outreach. He's, he's his daughter played for the basketball team as a thousand point scorer for it. He has grandkids in the district and he wanted to do something nice for the district as far as with our athletic programs and the gym. And um, I'll let him take the floor with that to kind of answer any questions on that. But we're looking into to doing a new five-year lease with the Wilson Group with this new equipment to give us like just a better overall setup, which Josh really worked with many back and forth, probably there have been a little bit crazy, but I think we got the right machines in here now. And um, like I said, no increase in costs and they're wanting to do something nice for the community, so I'll let him take the floor. Good evening, everyone. Um, as um, Chris said, my name is Derek Wilson. I'm the owner of the Wilson Group. Uh, the Wilson Group is a um, workflow solutions provider. Anything that deals in the creation, production, distribution, and sharing of information and documents, um, ranging from copiers all the way up to document storage, destruction, and retrieval. Um, with that being said, I want to start out by saying thank you to the district um, for continuing to trust and believe in the Wilson Group. 
Uh, we've been able to partner with you for the last seven years. Um, as Chris has conveyed, it's a process, and we're in the process now of streamlining um, your workflow. And what I mean by that is you have a significant amount of antiquated printers, color printers, that there's a high cost association with that versus segueing that over to the MFPs where your cost association is, you might say, half of what you're used to. So we've eliminated a significant amount of printers with the goal of printing to the MFPs with a significant lower cost, but more firepower, so to speak, by adding three devices to the district. Um, so it's a win-win for everyone, and you keep your, your investment the same. Um, and then on the flip side, I think the biggest thing that we're able to do with and for the district is that, as Chris had mentioned, you know, um, all my children went to the Carlington School District. I had three daughters that graduated from here. My youngest one was a pretty good athlete. Um, and then I have my granddaughters now. My grandkids are in the district. And obviously I want to see everyone do well. So with that being said, um, one is the first thing I'd like to do is offer the district a 2% <coughs> discount across the board um, if you pay up front versus over a, a, a monthly cycle, um, which you'll see a savings, which you can put toward, back toward the community and the school district and the kids. Uh, the second thing is that we're going to give you the monies to swap out the scoreboards because they need to be changed. Um, so we're willing to do that as well. Um, and we just really want to see and continue to sponsor, obviously, the golf outing. We've always been a platinum sponsor for that. So we're, we're a firm believer if you get what you give in life, and we'd like to give the children and the district of Carlington an opportunity to be the best that they can be. And that's the purpose of the Wilson Group and the workflow solution that we're providing to you today. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, you for, thank you for all you're doing for us, but thank you for being a two-generation Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I got, I got 13 grandkids, so it's going to be around for a while. Good for you. <laughs> okay. um, Joe Apple, can I just yes, ask you a question? You said MFP, and I'm wondering what that is and how that is more efficient than... than Yes, the old oh, that's I'm sorry. No, 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 I, I throw a lot of acronyms out of time. So you have, so what I mean by MFP is multifunction product or device. So they do copy, print, scan, and fax. So the copiers. the copiers, really, in layman's terms, versus you have a significant amount of antiquated printers, which are single function devices. So your users will print to the printers, then take the document off the printer and walk to the copier and scan or print to whatever they want to do. Right. So it's defeating the purpose of streamlining the convergence of the technology. So why not just print straight to the device um, and save so half? You, right, so, right. so you need, instead of like to a printer, one copy, so you send it to the MFP and you say, well, I need 250 copies. It's, exactly, right. yes. Okay. And you get better image quality and much more functionality versus just a single function printer. So it's, it's more efficient with it and all that sort it's of stuff. more efficient from a from a workflow or productivity standpoint as it pertains to time as well as it's more efficient as it pertains to dollars and cents right. because your cost per page if I'm not mistaken off the top of my head Vinny's better than me with the numbers I believe you're probably half um, you're around what 005 for black it's, it's, and white it costs about half yeah um, of what it, per mm -hmm. page mm -hmm. the cost to run through a copier or an MFP, it's about half as much as it is to print to, to, to the printer. So by driving all that volume to the copier, it, it helps the whole financial transaction work out so we can put more copiers into the district to make them more efficient. I wanted to jump in on that um, uh, with the efficiencies. One of the things at the district is there are over 15 different models of printers over the years that have been accumulated, and with that comes over 57 supply items. Right. So uh, Angie Zanone is the person that handles that, and it's, it becomes challenging for both us and her, and with this solution, the printers will, will have a grand total of five supply items. So there's a lot of streamlining, and they, they have a higher yield, so her, her time can be much better spent doing the things that she's good at rather than worrying about printer toner. Um, that, that was a big part of what started driving this, and, um, and, and it'll, if we think about the entire thing, we'll give the, the district 
just the efficiencies of the, the staff and everybody will be greatly enhanced. Thank you. Yeah. And with, you were talking about putting the machines in early and then maybe some of the cool things with the production printer. Oh, sure, I can follow up. So part of the, uh, one of the additions to the district is a production level printer into the shop area up in the high school. Um, and that will provide the ability to do uh, much thicker papers, very pro, like pro quality stuff that, that has maybe been printed at Kinko's or things like that. And at Kinko's, one sheet of paper would cost 50 cents to the district, and in, in here it'll cost a nickel. So there's by bringing that in house, there's there's some soft cost or some not even realized cost savings at this point. But it also allows for that to be utilized in an educational standpoint, where you can teach some of those uh, real things for the um, what is supposed to happen in the shop and learn those tech ed type uh, functions. So uh, that'll be included in there to make booklets, uh, banners, things like that. So uh, working with Josh, that was uh, Josh Jones really uh, was, was behind that aspect of it and uh, we were able to work that into the so When do we expect that to be installed? Um, so we're working through that. The two large copiers, we're going to work out a way to get those in immediately because those have actually like, already served. <coughs> we can work with the district as soon as possible on the the production printer as well with this transaction of billing the new cycle will begin with the fiscal year okay. in january so or, i'm sorry you, july if you say yes tonight <laughs> we can do the next <laughs> mr wilson do that <laughs> <laughs> but some other things we we're able to build in as well is the uh with the copiers, not there. So instead of sending to a printer, printers generally you can't do front to back printing also. So the copy machines you can send straight through the front to back. It saves on paper. It also collates and does the stapling as well. Um, and in addition to that, we were entered in some uh, security measures as well. So that if we're printing secured documents, IEPs, GIPs, that, things of that nature, um, now you'll log in the machine. You're, you'll be basically printing to a cloud. And from that cloud, you could go to any printer then, or any copier in the district, and print your, your job from that from that machine. Then. Follow the print. Yeah. So uh, if I can follow that, uh, Dr. Printer, is uh, there's a software piece that actually Joe Rodella uh, purchased for the district. We've been, we've been we'll, we will roll it out to its entirety with this um, solution. It's called Papercut, and it's a piece of software that runs on the server, and all of the uh, users that use their pre-existing. Right now they type their login, we're going to use their pre-existing HID badges. So from a, it, it hits on the secure uh, aspect. So if you hit file print, it actually is printing into a server in the cloud where you can pull that down from, from every device that's connected to it in the district, which is convenient. There are service issues that happen in, in, in our industry, so people are not hindered, so back to their efficiencies. If one machine that they had originally sent to, they can just go to the next one and release it. Uh, that also allows for the reduction of use because of waste jobs. Um, a district a little larger than, than, than Carlington that we, we, we work with, who were at the end of a year cycle, uh, was able to save 52,000 pieces of paper from coming out of their <coughs> devices. Cost you know, somewhere probably around $1,500. Uh, by putting that that software in and using it in this fashion, so there is a, there is a unknown, but a, a, a re, we're going to realize some some cost or some efficiency in that sense. Um, so and there's also an audit trail. So if there ever is a need for something, you know what everybody is doing and who did it and when. So yeah, we have counts on what everybody prints now from that. And, and it allows for a lot of control as well, so we can make sure, and we, we've committed to Josh and to Chris, that we would sit down uh, quarterly <coughs> to review the usage, and we have the ability to put in controls to what the staff is able to use, whether that's from color or overall usage, to make sure that that budgeted amount is truly what the district is, is going to see. And we can work that over time. And we've been working on that process for about two years now Indeed. to continue to clean up what our <coughs> printing was as we saw our use of it. So Dave Wilson's all Wilson Group has always been willing to come in and say, okay, this is what you're using, let's fix fix your rates, let's move your move your averages from this level to this level, you're moving black and white as we've just kind of 
trying to become more efficient and less costly. Awesome. I, um, I appreciate like the connection community and everything. You said scoreboards. Mm -hmm. That's like really amazing. Like which scoreboards? I don't. I don't know which basketball. The ones in the gym. Okay. There's two. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. Very much. That's a good deal. Thank you. Football one needs to be done too. You know. <laughs> 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 I'm so glad I can't pay attention. He's left-handed. If we vote tonight, can we get a point for the football stadium? <laughs> 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 some of that information and to do some things with it rather than just let the whole thing sort of sit there and not go anywhere. So from, from the standpoint of having had a discussion of strategically planning how we're going to use our fund balance, what is the desire of the board in terms of assessing that, implementing it, etc.? Can we talk about at the next meeting, maybe taking some action? One thing Jude and I talked about was, for example, we know we have certain capital projects that are going to have to be done in the next five years. Our suggestion would be to set up a capital projects fund and just transfer that money into that, uh, into that account as a, as a first step. Because we know we're going to have to spend that money. We know that from depth. Yeah, and I think we, we were talking about that meetings ago, too, with some of the surplus maybe we have and to a capital part, just something to be in that process. So, Dave, we, you, we, you were going to send a copy that... I know, and I apologize. I started earlier today and it's to get out. I'll do that. I promise I'll do that tomorrow. Thank yeah. you. My apologies. From my impression, I think the next steps were for you and, and Jude to get with John and Chris and sort of have a deeper conversation about the tool and about the assumptions and make sure the four of you are on the same page. And if Chris and John bring it to us and say, hey, we like this tool, we think it's valuable, we think we should use it, then I personally would say, okay, that's, you know, that's... Are we, and, and I know there were some directors who weren't meeting last week, okay. but are we on the same page so that we need to be strategic in how we use our fund balance? that we, where we may be needing to work to dis establish the amounts we're going to be using each year. And that's where the tool comes in. Are we all on the same page that we need to do this consciously and purposely and strategically going forward? <clears throat> is, that, is that one thing we can take from this meeting? I don't disagree. Yeah. Any, disagree any disagreement to that? David, I'll be looking forward to that uh, email. <clears throat> you'll, you'll get it. You'll get it. In fact, I'll send it to you first. Thank you. So, all right, I'll, I'll mention to Chris, and we'll try to get together with John, and uh, rather to Jude, get together with John and Chris. Uh, but then look forward also to establishing that capital funds account, and maybe we can even talk about doing that at the next meeting. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you. Any other financial issues question to be oh, sorry. Um, the program services budget that you have before you is will be on your agenda which will be sent <coughs> tomorrow morning um it was just on her copy that the IU sent so i was giving you a hard copy there's also a <coughs> digital copy on in board docs as well 
So, and I'll send you an email tomorrow to let you know when it's live. Thank you. We have a public question on finance? Yes. Awesome. Do you want to identify yourself? For the I'm Jamie Harvey. I have a child at Crafton Elementary. Um, I hate to be the one to ask this because I'm not panicked, but what is the district's plan proactively if we do close? Because where I work, we've been getting emails of, this is what's going to happen. You need to be prepared. We've been in the process collaborating with the AIU and PDE in the process of developing our pandemic plan. We attended a webinar last week in relationship to those plans. This week, um, put more formalized steps to our plan, and then also attending a, a final webinar with the AIU on, on Friday as well. Uh, to finalize our plans as well in the event that pandemic spreads much further than it currently has. Will there, if there, the schools do close, will the students have assignments? Will they have flexible instructional days? How does that work? The problem with the state has not come out with a statement saying that they would accept <coughs> flexible instructional days. The, the, um, Carlington has not applied for, for FIDS at this time, so we would not have the opportunity to use flexible instructional days to cover some of those days. Now, if we do go into, into closures, then you're probably looking weeks as opposed to just four days of what the, the state allows for FIDS. Um, we also run into the challenge of being able to provide instruction for some of our special education students. Um, those services cannot be provided in the absence of, of direct contact, so we would definitely have issues there. Um, the last ish, the last word I think from uh, Governor Wolf, or I'm sorry, from uh, uh, Mr. Rivera at the uh, at PDE level, uh, indicated that the days he missed would most likely be attributed then at the end of the school year. Um, so the days that we would take off, most likely we have to make those up at the end of the school year. Okay. Thank you. So, but we have um, prior to this, Mr. McDade, even before the the pandemic issue with the coronavirus uh, came out. Um, purchase some equipment, the electrostatic sprayers. Electrostatic sprayers. Um, there are cordless devices that can go through very quickly go through classrooms. Um, so part of our plan is to take a look at if we know of any students who have um, contracted any type of flu, not just the coronavirus, but just flu in general, that we would be able to go through and, and target specific rooms, go through extra cleaning of, of those areas. And then also take a look at any students who have low immune systems in our district as well, track their schedules to make sure that we're cleaning those rooms and, and going through with the newer technology that we have as well. So we're trying to put together a comprehensive plan that not only will help us just with this singular issue, but then issues down the road. The flu is something, it comes around every year, and I think some of the plans we're putting in place will uh, help better address some of those issues in the future as well. So it's a good question, I'm glad you brought it up. Another question. Not relevant to that. Sorry, Mr. Wilson, this is not going to help your paper supply. <laughs> Sorry. One of the things that this district does is send home flyers like, you can't believe. I get out my kids folder every night and stand at the garbage and throw away paper after paper after paper. Is there a way we can limit all that copying and do um, he doesn't buy the paper for us <laughs> do the email blasts yes doing things of that nature to cut back yes. on the copying and also it's colored paper which is more expensive than white paper and that's what I know we've talked about I can't remember if it was at a PTA meeting or another board meeting but it's something we've talked about and I haven't seen any process the flyers, district flyers school flyers oh like they're all kinds in. of flyers well, that's what I'm yeah they know we get like a, half the teachers have websites that I don't see why they can't post They're enough. usually not <coughs> flat, like classroom teacher flyers. Every like the holiday parties, there's like a reminder. Most of the flyers though are PTA kind of functions. Um, any like anything that the principal would send out, she sends out like a calendar and things. Is it so, on the website? <laughs> Some of it might be, but there's also. Just, I mean, we like, have the, the capabilities, and it's mm -hmm. more of a conversation. That but I don't know, like, if every Thursday you get an email blast with every parent communication for that week. Mm -hmm. That's right. one thing that we're working on, and that what we're going to try to start with is, in every other week, um, discuss this with Mrs. Herman 
probably two or three weeks into into getting here, um, is it starting on an every other week rotation is sending out a blast uh, that has information. A lot of that stuff would be the, the types of things you would get in a flyer. Um, and then when I was at Carnegie last week for the PTA meeting, some of the, the same types of issues came up. And one of the things I asked back to, to the community too is, um, is email sufficient? Is, is that a good means of communication? And I think in other cases too, there were um, some issues of, of just being able to find things on our website and be able to, to locate them. So we we're looking at some type of a landing page on our website that would be uh, much easier to navigate and be able to, to get you to the resources that you need. And in the same way, is it with an e-blast, we can put links, embed, hyperlinks embedded into that, so it would take you directly <coughs> to parts of our web that, that directly address some of those issues. Um, so I think that's something we, we can definitely, we, have, we definitely have the technology to do it. It's just a matter of organizing our efforts to, to put it out there. Dr. Kreider, is, is it a concern at all that there, there might still be people who don't have right. access to yeah. technology? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I feel like we've had this conversation mm -hmm. and we tried to do this several years ago and we have mm -hmm. to balance the fact that not everybody's as connected as some of us may be. So mm -hmm. everything we take away and we send out electronically only, there are going to be parents who don't get it and then they come to the meetings and let us know we're not getting anything. Our kids don't have anything. So. I don't think it's a bad. I think it's a balance. I don't think that we can make all of this go away. Can we give parents an opportunity to opt out of paper? Like, yeah, every other yeah. 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 It is a management issue at the, yeah, right. at the classroom. Well, that's why this is a conversation of organization. But I think there, there's definitely ways we, we can live. And I, I agree, there's definitely a balance. Um, I can't recall the exact percent of, of emails that we have from parents. Um, probably about half, so uh, if we made efforts to, to increase that, to find out what is our, our true digital landing spot as far as uh, individuals with, with access, I think the more we narrow that down, that would help too. Even if we had people, we could consolidate. Instead of having four separate pages on five days, we could have one page front and back that has all those items on it. So there's ways to address what you're, what you're, what you're asking. Yeah, the devices, have booklet makers, so you can make nice little booklets and send them out. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but these new machines have capabilities like scanning, so you can make a PDF and send it out. Scan the file, scan the folder, scan the email. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. All right. Any other plans, questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the finance meeting. Second. Move second. Aye. All those in favor side, opposed nay. Aye. 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 Aye.